we spend time with God. And brothers and sisters, that is solution number two. Not only must we help others in the midst of our storm, but we must also go to God for strength in the midst of the storm. That's where Jesus got his strength from. That is how he was able to walk on his storm. He helped others and then he went and he talked to the Father. He spent time in the presence of God. And that's what we sing it, you know, we sing it so often. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, that's where I am strong. Seeking your face, touching your grace. In that cleft of the rock. That's where Jesus was, in the cleft of the rock. That's where he was hiding, and that's where you and I need to hide. Not that we're hiding, you know, escaping from the, 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 the problems, but we are finding our strength and knowing where our strength comes from. And then the Bible tells us that the disciples were out in the middle of the ocean. They were now facing their storms, four miles out of the coast. Now, I never thought about this. But it took, it, it, Jesus had to walk on the water for four miles. So I'm not sure if he walked or if he glided or if he flew. But he did. The disciples were four miles out there. And Jesus came to them walking on the water. The winds were pounding against their, their vessels. You know, that's what was happening with them. They were being battered and bruised by the winds of the storm. That's what this. COVID-19 is doing and it's not necessarily doing it to our bodies it's doing it to our minds some people of course are, are being battered physically, they have the virus they have the illness, I heard a young man testifying on, on the internet and he says you know when this virus comes to you, you're vomiting, you're in pain you can't see about yourself it's difficult, it's hard to breathe struggle to breathe. So, so some people, their bodies are being battered by this virus. But there are many of us who are being battered mentally. All kinds of doubts, all kinds of fears, all kinds of anxieties. I wonder if. And then our economy is being battered. And many economies around the world are, are being battered. Our, our normal schedules have been disrupted. And brothers and sisters, that is the concern that many people have, that even after this storm has passed, that there will be many people who will be battered and bruised, and many economies will be unable to recover. But what did Jesus tell them in the midst of this storm? What did Jesus say? Take courage. Be of good share. It is I. Do not be afraid. There are three things that he's saying to us there. First of all, take courage. Take courage. In other words, he's saying to them, be strong. In the midst of this trouble, in the midst of your crisis, be strong. Take courage. Do not be afraid. Take courage. The opposite of courage is fear. So what he's saying to the disciples is, don't be afraid. Do not allow fear to paralyze you. Do not allow fear to paralyze you. But that sounds easy to say. That sounds very easy to say. Where do I get, where do I work up this, this courage from? I believe it's in the next phrase. Jesus says, it is I. It is I. And those words can be translated, I am. I am. When Jesus says, it is I, what he was saying is, I am. I am, and that takes me back to way back to the book of Exodus when Moses was in trouble and he asked God to show him who he was. So God said to Moses, I am that I am. In other words, whatever you need me to be, I am. And that, my brothers and sisters, is where we receive our strength and our safety. Our safety is not necessarily in staying at home. You know? And I'm not telling anybody not to stay home, all right? Our safety and our security is not necessarily in a, in a, in a, uh, a medication. 
our safety and our security is not necessarily from the government or from the health sector. The safety and security of the believer is in the person of Jesus Christ. It is because of who Jesus is that I am safe. Glory to God. It's because Jesus says, I am, that I am safe. It is because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life that I know that I am saved. It's because Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I know that I am saved. It's because Jesus says, I am the water of life. That's how I know that I am saved. It's because Jesus says, I am your rock. I am your fortress. I am your anchor. I am your shelter. I am that I am. Your safety is in the person of Jesus. Who Jesus is, is in the person of Jesus. And our security, our security is in the person. So every time you feel afraid, what do we do? Because when we read on a little bit, we hear that Peter, Peter walked on the water, but then he became afraid. And that's something that happens to us as human beings. Don't, don't quarrel with Peter. Don't get down on Peter. Because there are times when I feel courageous, and then there are times when I feel fear. There are times when I feel strong, and then there are times when I feel weak. Am I talking to somebody? I'm sure that sometimes you've come to it like that. Can I get an amen from the house? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. There are times when you're up and down, you know, and there was a point when Peter was strong. He walked out and he was walking to Jesus. But as he turned his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sing. And brothers and sisters, there are times when your faith will be strong and then there are times when your faith may be weak. What do you do in those times? Cry out. Cry out. That's what Peter did. That's what Peter did. He cried out. Amen. And notice, brothers and sisters, that your prayers during this time doesn't have to be said in church. Where was Peter when he, when he cried out? He was in the middle of a storm, in the ocean. That's where he cried out. That is where he cried out. You don't have to be in church to cry out to God. And notice also that your prayers don't have to be long for God to answer. You know, Peter didn't sit down and start to go into all the details about prayer. He didn't use the acronym ACTS. You know, people when they're praying now, they use A-C-T-S. Uh, adoration, confession, and thanksgiving, and then supplication. Peter didn't wait to all of that. What did he do? He cried out three words, Lord, save me. That's all you need. Lord, help me. I don't know what is your prayer today, what situation you are in. Lord, deliver me. Lord, bless me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, uphold me. Lord, bless me. Lord, give me peace. Whatever it is, a simple prayer. That's what we need to cry out to God for at this time. And we know that when we cry out to God, He hears. He hears. And the Bible says He was right there waiting to lift Peter up and to deliver him. The arms of the Lord are not short during this time. And His ears are not deaf. He is simply waiting to hear you cry out to Him. Amen. Oh, you get with me. And I want to just sing a little chorus. Hear my cry, O Lord, and attend unto my prayer. As we wrap up today. Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. Mm, from the ends of the earth will I That is higher 
Lord, you know each person bowing before you now. You know our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you will bring peace where there is crisis, where there is anxiety. We pray, Lord, for our health care sectors, our doctors, our nurses, those who are on the front line. Help them, protect them. We pray for our nation and our leaders. Guide them into paths of righteousness for the betterment of our nation and the safety of our country. This, these mercies we ask in no other name but in the name of Jesus. With thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you all now and forevermore. Amen.